Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about our second to last story, Mother and Daughter. As we read, we're going to take notes on Yoli and her mother's interactions. So as always, I'm not going to read the whole story, but we are going to pause at certain places to pull some things out. So hopefully this will help you as you go back and read it on your own and answer the questions. So we're going to start out. Um, so the first few paragraphs are just telling us a little bit about Mrs. Moreno, Yoli's mom. Um, it tells us what she looks like. It tells her, tells us about her sense of humor. Um, and then we see their first real interaction in paragraph five, starting in paragraph five, kind of paragraph four too. But so basically what happens is Yoli's mom promises to wake her up after the movie so she can go to bed. Um, but she doesn't. And she says, laughed under her breath, turned the TV light and lights off and tiptoed to bed. Yoli woke up in the middle of the night and didn't know where she was. She's like freaked out for a minute. She's looking around for her mom. There's no answer. Finally, um, Yoli's grogginess cleared and she realized her mother had gone to bed, leaving her on the couch. Another of her little jokes. So something we know right now about their interactions is that they play jokes on each other. So we're going to highlight this part right here. So... Yoli's mom likes to play jokes on her. It says, but Yoli wasn't laughing, so she didn't really find it that funny. She so, but what she does is set something up for her mom to get her back. That says she put a glass of water there so that her mom would knock it over onto her. Then she burns her mother's toast and gloated. Gloat means to like um it's like when you're like laughing at someone, kind of bragging over them. Let's look at the actual definition so everybody can see it. To dwell on one's own success or another's misfortune. So she's kind of laughing at her mom like, ha, gotcha. So we're going to highlight this part too. That's kind of how their interactions go. They play jokes on each other and they may or may not always be entirely good natured. So sometimes maybe they are, but not every time. Wrong key. Hundred percent good nature. Guys, why can't I spell? I can't spell. Google just can't. So we're gonna move on to paragraph ten. Um it says in the very first sentence that we're gonna highlight right here, despite their jokes, mother and daughter usually got along. So we're gonna highlight this part. Um and we're going to say they do have a good relationship, though. They love each other and typically get along with each other. Typically get along with each other. We see that in this paragraph, um, they have things they enjoy doing. They enjoy doing things together, like um, watching matinees. Those are like cheap movies, basically. They play croquet and checkers. So they enjoy being together. We also know that Mrs. Moreno encouraged Yoli to study hard because she wanted her daughter to be a doctor. She bought Yoli a desk, a typewriter, and a lamp that cut glare so her eyes would not grow tired from hours of studying. So I'm going to highlight this portion too because it's showing us that um, Yoli's mom cares about her education. So Mrs. Moreno cares about Yoli's education, wants her to be successful, and provides her the things she needs to do that. So also, guys, as you're annotating the story on your own, you do not have to annotate the exact thing, same things as me. They don't have to look exactly the same. These are just to help you. So if you have other things that you think are important to pull out of the text, by all means, do that. 
So then we're going to keep moving. Um, the next couple paragraphs kind of describe um, Yoli, describes, there's some dialogue between Mrs. Moreno and Yoli. In paragraph 13, we see that Yoli responds to her mom talking about her past or her hard work. Um, that Yoli is kind of like, yes, mama, and isn't going to give her any particular sympathy because it says if she gave her sympathy, she would begin her stories about how she had come with her family from Mexico and how it was difficult and all of these things. So Yoli is kind of like, she knows that her mom is going to start telling stories. She knows that her mom often talks about these things. So her mom often talks about the difficulties she faced. Yoli has probably heard these stories a hundred times. You know, like when your parents are telling back in my day stories and you're like, yes, I know you've told me about a thousand times. So she knows how to not get her mom to start on the stories. So as we keep going on, paragraph 14, paragraph 15, people think Yoli's mom is really funny. Um, paragraph 15, we find out the main conflict of the story. Yoli needs a new dress for the eighth grade dance, but they can't afford one. And that's kind of a problem. But in paragraph 16, it says, her mother is genuinely sad because they couldn't buy the outfit. So her mom, it's not like an, oh, sorry, we can't afford it, where she doesn't really want to provide it for her daughter. She really does want to provide these nice things for her daughter. But she just can't. And she feels bad about it. Um, it talks a little bit about her remembering her own past, which was even more poor than she and Yoli are now. Um, let me see, I lost my place. She can only afford to buy her some new shoes and some fabric dye to dye an old white dress black so it will look brand new. As we keep reading, um, we find out that Yoli is afraid that this is not going to work at all. She feels it's just going to fail and it's just going to make her look more foolish. And she just, she's like, she can't even watch. But in paragraph 20, we find that the dress came out shiny black. It looked brand new and sophisticated, like what people in New York wear. So it looks beautiful. It looks good. Yoli is so excited. And she's going to go to the dance, and she's hoping to dance with this boy that she likes, Ernie Castillo. And she's just excited. She does. She looks beautiful. She goes to the dance. Her mom drops her off. She meets up with her best friend, and it describes the dance in paragraph 24. It looks beautiful and romantic. Everybody's having a good time. In paragraph 25, she finally gets to dance with... Um, Ernie, the boy she likes, she says yes, and they have a wonderful time. They dance three different dances together, and then it starts raining. And at first, this doesn't seem like it's much of a problem. They all head inside. They all race in to shelter. The girls go into the bathrooms to brush their hair, dry off. Um, one girl's dress is ruined, and Yoli feels bad for her and tries to help dry it off and fix it, but it's ruined. But then Yoli looks in a mirror. And we find, we're going to pause on this paragraph, we're in paragraph 29 right here, Yoli went to a mirror. We're going to pause here for a little bit. So this paragraph says, Yoli went to a mirror. She looked a little gray now that her mother's makeup had washed away, but not as bad as some of the other girls. She combed her damp hair, careful not to pull too hard. She couldn't wait to get back to Ernie. Yoli bent over to pick up a bobby pin and shame spread across her face. A black puddle was forming at her feet. Drip, black drip, drip, black drip. The dye was falling from her dress like black tears. Yoli stood up. Her dress was now the color of ash. She looked around the room. The other girls, unaware of Yoli's problem, were busy grooming themselves. What could she do? Everyone would laugh. 
They would know she died an old dress because she couldn't afford a new one. She hurried from the restroom with her head down across the cafeteria floor and out the door. She raced through the storm, crying as the rain mixed with her tears and ran into twig-choked gutters. So we're going to camp out on this paragraph for a second, and then we're going to quickly finish up the story. So the dye was falling from her dress like black tears. This is, as I'm sure you all know, a simile, but I want to talk about why this word choice. The author could have chosen to compare the black drips to anything, ink, um, dirt, whatever, but he chose to use the word tears. So tears, you cry when you're sad or frustrated or disappointed. And Yoli was looking forward to this dress. She was so excited. She was looking forward to this dance. She was so excited the dress worked out. And now it's like the dress, fall, the dye falling from her dress is like the tears of disappointment and sorrow over her ruined evening. Because the dress is one thing that's ruined, but what the dress overall has ruined is Yoli's evening, her ability to get to know Ernie. So the dress reminds us of Yoli's ruined evening. The tone is the emotion that it conveys. So this simile, this simile, yeah, I almost a metaphor. The simile is like it's sad, it's sorrow, disappointment. The tone is disappointed. Disappointed and sad. Yoli's evening has been ruined as well as her dress. Oh, I realized there's one. There we go. There is one. Guys, I'm done with Google. Okay, so we're going to stop there. Um... And now, see, we have the metaphor of crying, but now Yoli really is crying. She's embarrassed. She's leaving the dance. It says um, her rain is mixing with the tears. So even the storm is kind of similar to how she's feeling. The storm and the dress are all pictures of how oof, Yoli is so she finally gets home, and guys, I think we might have to split this one into two parts. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to stop here because my time is running out. Like I think I've said before, I only get 15 minutes on this little recording app before it will run out of time. So we're going to actually pause there. We will pick up in the second video in part two with paragraph 30. So stay tuned for that, and I will talk to you guys later.